Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, broadcasting live, of course, on GFQNetwork.com. And of course, on F4W Online Wrestling Observer website. Of course, with me as always, the one, the only, the maestro, Rich Stambolian. Oh, what's going on, man? I thought you were going to do the thing you texted me before, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. You know what? I'm going to save that one because I want to do like a big production with that intro. Oh, really? Okay. Cool. With the music, if we can get the rights to that song, that'd be amazing. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> Guys, this show is all about professional wrestling. We talk about the good and the bad. We try to have fun with the show. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff going on, man. Uh, I last oh, yeah. week was our first show uh, that went up on F4W. Uh, mm-hmm. online and uh, the amount of feedback unbelievable guys uh, very much appreciate all the feedback that we got a lot of new viewers a lot of uh, previous viewers that you know over the years mm-hmm. it happens uh, you kind of forget about a show and then they, they've they've come back so this has been awesome and uh, you know we're we're, in, we're getting into Wrestlemania season so what better way to highlight how great wrestling is <laughs> with uh, with one of the hottest times of the year so, oh, dude, yeah. I got I got a bunch of stuff. I got to I got to recap first. Sure. Um, first of all, big shout out to Jonathan with these intros, with the video and the audio stuff he's been working on. He's been doing a great job. Of course, MG Geek, Suncast. We got this awesome crew. Starting next week, we're gonna start a new thing where we're gonna have Matt Men clips. Uh, so two or three of the best segments from the show are gonna go up on YouTube. Uh, we're probably gonna continue doing this for the foreseeable future. Uh, just adding more of these clips so people discover the po- product and everything. So that'll, I haven't decided if we're going to do a Mad Men clip page or we're going to do it on the main page. I got to figure out what we should do. I'm going to leave that up to the audience and what they suggest and what's easier mm-hmm. uh, for them. So uh, if we do a clip page, listen, maybe we'll have four clips to show up on there instead of two or three. You know, it, it, we're just working on different things here. But dude, a lot of decent stuff. Raw, I, I watched the entirety of Raw. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and, I know. You know why, though. You know why you watched all of Raw. Well, you know what? I was gonna watch it anyway because it was just on, right? And then okay. when I saw okay. Hunter was gonna be on, for you know, and then they they figured out this main event thing, I was like, you know exactly. what? I'm pretty intrigued by this. Gonna stay up, gonna watch. I did the same thing. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch all of Raw. My wife was shocked by that, by the way. She was like, that, why? I was like, Triple H is kind of. I think he's gonna wrestle at the end. And you know what? I found it very enjoyable. So he did three minutes. Uh, I'm not going to recap all the rub, but uh, the news came mm-hmm. out on Monday that Drew McIntyre tested positive for COVID. So he's out for the next 10 to 14 days. He might. I think he's going to miss the go home show for Rumble. Oh, really? Um, dude, you know what's really weird? Didn't they do a whole build for Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg without Roman Reigns? They did. Well, they did. I think it was it was Goldberg. Um, in like a couple of interviews saying that, um, Roman's next, but, and <laughs> I got shifted. So, uh, you know, like does the Goldberg thing, I know we touched on it last week, but I feel like that can shift at any given time and you can have like Goldberg Roman at mania. No, oh, no, Crickets, no, no. Right? I don't want to see it, man. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not, and again, I'm not, I'm not hating on Bill Goldberg, right? Like oh. I, I, I have a very Not different outlook on this. When he's on TV, I understand what they're trying to do. Do I Absolutely. care for it? No. Like, if I never see another Goldberg match, I really, it's not going to, uh, it doesn't matter to me. So I get it. I get why people mm-hmm. are annoyed. But uh, to now you're going to have to do this build without Drew being there. Right. So I don't know how much people are going to care about it. You know, like, I don't. I don't know if anybody really cares for this to be a big time main event match at at Royal Rumble. And there is that little fear, right? And I think this is the positive here when it comes to pro wrestling. People fear that he's going to be true. Uh, right. And like somebody said this to me and I was like, no way. I'm like, I don't think so. I, th- I think they know better. I'm like, no, they don't know better. Right. Right. I think the interesting thing about wrestling and wrestling fans in general also is like we hope and pray that WWE knows better as far as like what the fans want to see. But they don't, you know, especially now with no crowds, they can do whatever they want and pipe in whatever noises they want. And we're going to have to sit there and take it. And that's it. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, they're going to pipe in all the noises. Goldberg's going to get such a great reaction. They're going to be able to Mm -hmm. kind of make this into what they want it to be instead of having it in front of a live audience where they would probably boo exactly. this, uh, especially at a Royal rumble. A lot of people would not mm-hmm. be happy with drew potentially losing to bill Goldberg. Right. 
But, you know, I mean, if it's WWE and you, you're, you're looking for a reason to pull the title off of Drew, they could turn this into an angle. Drew has not been in a wrestling ring in, in 15, 16 days. He hasn't been able to train as well. Mm-hmm. And there you go. Goldberg beats him really quickly because he just couldn't train because he was sick. And Goldberg's a machine. Oh, man. You know what, dude? I just called the finish of that match. Yeah, That's the whole story. Call in right now. Three Spear. spears. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think they're going to. I honestly don't think they're going <clears> to <throat> drop that title to Goldberg, man. Come on. Like, it's been it's been done so many times at this point where it, it's it's almost bizarre where, you know, when Goldberg shows up, he gets a belt. I, I don't think he should. I think how he many, should put over Drew. How many times did he have the WCW title? Three. Was it three? Three, maybe six. I don't know. I, I mean, are we are we have we hit the point that Goldberg has held the title as many times in WWE than he has in WCW? I, I can't I remember. Think so. Dude, you know what's so funny? Like a lot of that WCW, like ninety once he held the title. Oh wow! Maybe he was once. He's a more decorated champion in the WWE lineage uh, history than he was in WCW. That doesn't make sense. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it bizarre. does. Again, like, uh, all right. So I mentioned this the other night on Twitter on Monday, where wrestling is kind of one of the only things that really heavily pushes nostalgia um, in terms of also pushing a current thing. You know yes. what I mean? Yes, so, like, I saw that tweet. And I, and, I, and I wanted to say, I totally agree with you. I can't think of any other franchise or, or product that does that, right? Somebody responded with Star Wars, which is correct because they use canonical history with everything that they do, right? But I feel like that's just its own little bubble. As far as wrestling goes, what did they do on Monday? They gave us a five-minute clip package of Goldberg from like 20 years ago, right? And I think what that does, it it it, it does this interesting thing where like new fans will look at that and say, hey, I'm going to sign up to the network and check out what this guy has done. And the older fans are like, "Oh man, look at Goldberg! Wasn't he yeah. the best?" Like one of one of one of our uh, one of our friends, Derek, texted me on Monday saying, "Like, yo, Goldberg, it was my guy when I was younger. Like in high school, Goldberg was the guy." And it's kind of interesting how those guys come back and watch TV now, but it's a it's a far cry from the height of what Bill Goldberg was in WCW, right? Like you remember yeah. watching that run? That run was ridiculous. It was twenty you years know, ago. You know what's funny? Um, I remember. So at that point, I was really mm. into WWE's product, right? I, I I wasn't like probably ninety six. I started doing like the channel back and forth. Mm-hmm. Ninety seven, I was way more in the WCW side until midway through, okay. and then like midway through ninety seven, like with the whole DX stuff and Bret Hart, I got really into. So like I was still doing the back and forth, but by the point that the Goldberg run like got really hot, I was way more on the WWE side of things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've I've ended up going back and rewatching it, and it kind of rehashes some of my memories. And one of the memories that I have is that, you know, Goldberg had the streak going, right? Because that's what right. really was. And it was legitimate. It was it, what they wasn't. They weren't working it. It was legitimate numbers. He was, mm-hmm. you know, 72 and 0 or 73 and 0, whatever it was. And I didn't watch for like two, three weeks. Right. I didn't watch WCW mm-hmm. and I turned it on. And this guy was at like 800 and 0. <laughs> yeah exactly you he know what i mean like, nine thousand person and i and... remember sitting there and tony shivani and they were doing this i, I can picture they were doing this like pan of the crowd mm-hmm. and tony shivani says like like a bill goldberg with his 198 win streak and whatever the number was and i'm thinking how is that possible how, right, what right. happened how many freaking house show matches did this guy work but it was an impressive run, and I think a lot of it – and listen, we're, we're going to get to the current stuff too, right? But I, I think this is yeah. interesting, and, and I think a lot of Bill Goldberg's success uh, may be an unpopular opinion, but he mm-hmm. was another bald white dude in black trunks that was very aggressive. Mm-hmm. You know, very different character, but there was – immediately when you saw Bill Goldberg, you're like, oh, man, I want to see him in Austin, right? But why? Yeah. Other than the fact that they're two bald guys in black trunks. I think I think the thing with Goldberg, which I I'm I'm almost 100 percent positive that you will agree with me on, is that when you watch Goldberg, it was like watching a train wreck. In that he really looked like he was kicking those dudes' asses. Dude, you know what though? We can make fun of it all we want, but that yeah. crowd watch some of those, you know, Pete Goldberg nitros. Yeah, he holds whoever it is up for the jackhammer, and that crowd mm-hmm. goes nuts. Him and a uh, great great example. Him and Raven. Oh right? yeah. 
Yeah. That crowd was losing their freaking minds for mm -hmm. Goldberg to win the U.S. title. Yeah, dude. He he had like some weird magic where like he just walked in and <laughs> beat the shit out of people and left. You know, whereas like you know you turn the channel and you have Austin who was doing the same thing, except it was a more. It seemed the Austin stuff was always a more organized story. You know, and yeah. case in point, like when go when they finally beat the streak, and he got tased by uh by Cattle Scott Prom. Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It fell apart completely, right? Dude, Whereas, do you remember watching Austin, that? Do you oh, remember yeah. watching it? You yeah. Know, how did you yeah. feel? I was just like, "What the f is happening right now?" I was like, "That's it." And then the next week, I was like, oh, "I guess that's it. I guess that's <laughs> it for Bill Goldberg. I guess that's it. He got tased by Scott Hall." Yeah, that's it. I I believe in that tasing, and we got to the current stuff. So when he when he tases him, right? Mm -hmm. I think Scott Hall also jolts a little while he's doing it. Uh, he's selling the tase. I, he's selling the tase himself, like almost like telling mm -hmm. Goldberg, like, "Okay, man, work it like me," you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> hysterical. Uh, like so me. Monday Night Raw, Drew announced that he had COVID. Uh, ratings were interesting. One point eight million views for this. Uh, they were going up against. Um, they, I, I believe if they did not have Triple H on this card, it would have been a much lower rating. Uh, 100%. I think Dave and Brian were talking about it earlier this morning on Wrestling Observer Radio and how virtually women, women left in droves after the first hour. They uh, but like men, they, I guess they don't <laughs> like Triple H. They, they like sexy Drew with his hair. They don't care for mm -hmm. uh, Triple H. But it is interesting how. I got into this, right? And listen, yeah. three minutes. It was like three, maybe less than three minutes. Hunter was wearing a shirt because obviously he's not in ring shape. This guy also hasn't had a match in over a year. He didn't wrestle at all in jeans. 2020. Mm -hmm. There was no matches in 2020 for him. So obviously now he's back. He had a match. Uh, do they do this again? Oh, yeah. His last match, I believe, was in Japan um, against Bobby Roode. And somebody when? else, I think he was uh, 2019. I think April 2019 was his last official match when they did like a tour of Japan. And there was a tag match. Really? That was his yeah. last match? Yeah. And huh. I, th I think you're going to get one or two more Triple H's. I really liked um, black motorhead t-shirt and jeans Triple H because that's usually how I dress. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> By the way, yeah. I ordered that Jericho shirt. Uh, when we I get know to you did. We'll talk about it. I ordered it. I I ordered it too, and then I immediately canceled it because I saw it how much you paid. Forty three bucks paid for it, right? Paid, but yeah. they charged me more. Yeah, uh, it so was weird. Did they? Yeah, dude. Like I saw it, like the the text you sent, and I was like, SOBs. "Oh, I know why." Like, what size? I got did you charged two X. Maybe that's why. I don't think so. It didn't say that, but I got charged like three dollars more, and I was just like, "F it," and I I did the refund like immediately. Yeah. Um. So they cool went shirt, up though. against. So Raw was going up against a national title ma game. Uh, listen, uh, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, Ric Flair in this sugar daddy to Lacey angle. Love it. Is, love it. You love it. I got. I it, love it, it bothered me. I don't want to see. Why? I don't want to see him on TV. I don't know. It just bothered me. I don't Why? want. You, I, you know what? I'm. I don't want to see Flair as a creep anymore. You don't want. You don't want Flair to have a sexual identity anymore. No, I want no, I want no, I don't want to see, I want no sexual identity for Ric Flair on TV. I want zero he, of that. But I think, I think the cringe that fans experience after that is definite. Obviously, that's the point, right? The it point is, the point, is yeah. to have, to be grossed out by the relationship of 71 year old Ric Flair, thousand year old Ric Flair, and 30 year old Lacey Evans. I, dude, yeah. I think it was great. She's, she's perfect in that part. You know, like the sugar daddy thing is hysterical. Um, and turning on Charlotte, I think, is great, too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm all about it. I'm, I'm with it. All right. At least you're, at least you're enjoying it. I'm super enjoying it. A um, couple other things here. Uh, is, here's a question for everybody. Is Triple H in the void with John Cena? Ooh. Because he disappeared, what? right? His, his sledgehammer caught on fire, and he went poof. Uh -huh. So maybe he's where Cena is. Wouldn't that be cool if they did like a cinematic void bit where Triple H is just walking around in complete darkness and it's and he meets John Cena in the NWO hat? Oh man. And they're just sitting there trying to get out. Mm -hmm. That I'd, could be I'd a whole series, that. man. You know what? I would if WWE had like a 20 something minute quick 
sitcom based series where it's Hunter and it's Cena sitting in this void mm. and they're trying to figure out how the hell to get out. And every now and then like food appears and they, they got to figure out where the hell the food's coming from. <laughs> they just you know, get like, like they just get gift stuff. baskets. Yeah, yeah. It, and then they, you know, and eventually they break out and it's Vince's house or something. Uh let's talk about last night. Uh good wrestling, good TV on both products. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. we'll start off with AEW. Man, that Pac match with Eddie Kingston. Great, great stuff. Pac's man, man, he looks great. Yeah, they both do. Listen, like my wife took a look. She did not know who Eddie Kingston was. She took one look at him and go, what's this guy from Yonkers? And I went, <laughs> he is. It's like, he, he is, is from actually. Yonkers. How did you know? Um, Pac, Pac looked awesome. Eddie, Eddie's such a great addition to that roster. Um, he sells so convincingly. Imagine this guy was never on. He's been around forever. If you, yeah, hey, Listen, if, you, if you're in the Northeast, you know, like, you, you've you, and you go to independent mat, uh, shows. You, you've seen an Eddie Kingston match. You've had to have seen this guy's been around forever, and now at this point in his career, he's able to shine like this. The dude cuts a very unique style promo. His cadence is unique. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it, it, you're not getting what you expect from a wrestling promo from him, and I think that's why it works. And his style is great. You know, it's a very unorthodox, different style you're seeing. Pac is phenomenal. We know what he's capable yeah. of. Um, I thought these two had a great match, and Pac's looking better and better every week. Oh yeah, big. I mean, big dude. He's, he's getting big, huge. He's, he's he's his body looks unbelievable. Uh, mm. but he has a question, right? We're, sure. we're talking about the AEW title picture, and we know what's you know where it's headed. Eventually, it's going to be headed to Hangman. But in the meantime, uh, does Eddie Kingston get a title run at this at some point? Does Pac get a title run at some point? You know, like. Who, who are the next group that you're thinking, okay, this guy could be a champion. This guy could be a champion. This guy could be a champion in AEW. Well, you're building the brand, right? So I think for sure the guys who are checkmarked to be champ at some point, Eddie Kingston, at some point, MJF, at some point, Pac, right? At some point, for sure, Ray Phoenix. Um, and you I think they put the title like, on Phoenix? 100%. I think it's, but, but it's, it's three years from now, you're going to see Ray Phoenix. You know what I mean? Like the now, now until this ship really really takes off as far as like popularity and viewers and all that stuff goes you have a good group of guys to shift that belt between kenny yeah. moxley jericho hangman etc right cody throw cody in there um but two three years from now that's when you're gonna get phoenix mjf uh a lot of the guys that we really enjoy watching who i don't know maybe need some maybe need a live crowd maybe need to get over a little more with a live crowd, right? You I know, think Eddie that Kingston is one of those guys. It. Yeah, Eddie Kingston yeah. is one of those guys that he, you know, it, it's crazy that we never saw Brody in front of a live crowd in AEW, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and and that's that's shame on so many levels, right? Uh, what his his whole story, but uh, Eddie Kingston's another guy we've never seen him in front of a, a live AEW crowd, right? And they would just eat this guy's, you know, promos up his his style up. I, I'm mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Pac's another one, man. You know, we didn't really see much he, at all in 2020 from him because he because of the the pandemic. But now mm-hmm. it's his time. He's here, and I think we're gonna get some cool stuff. And then also Lance Archer, uh, he did a run in at the end of that match. You know, he, he there's him and Pac had words because he came to well, save. I like that. I like uh, I like how they're using Lance Archer now. Um, I think with with a lot of stuff in AEW, it's for sure a slow burn, which I really appreciate, you know, and it's a lot of teases and a lot of like future stuff. So at some point, we know they're going to get that extra show, right? Or they, we know they're going to get that extra two hour show. They have dark. See, dark I don't, do don't want to see it, man. I, I, I'm I, less is more. I'm a big fan of that. And I, and I think they need to reevaluate the WWE's decisions here. With adding a second show and a third show and a fourth show, and then having all their stuff on- online, uh, something AEW doesn't really do is uh, oversaturate their presence online, and that's something WWE right. does. You go to WWE's channel, for example, right? Mm-hmm. They're uploading like six, seven, eight, nine videos a day because it's a business for them to upload to YouTube, and they have such a huge catalog of content that they could continue uploading years and years of content that you haven't seen or or new ways to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, AW doesn't have that, but I, I, you know, do they need another show? Do they need a third show that's an hour or two hours? 
I wouldn't mind a another show on TNT. Dark is what it is. Dark is great. You know, like I feel like Dark is for like the diehards at this point, you know, like the diehard wrestling fans. Um I I'm trying to summarize what you're telling me and what I think you're trying to say is you're worried that if AEW gets another show on TNT, it's going to be overexposure for them. Yes. Yes, I believe that that'll. So here's a great example. So I'm looking at, let me see, post dark show. Um, let me see what dark did this week. So dark last week did. Okay. Dark did 261,000 views. It's one day old. The week prior to that, it did a mm. half a million views. So a half a million people are watching dark mm. weekly or so. Dark's Let's fun. Say. Dark's a fun show. That's fun. That's fine. Um, yeah. But do you need to add a third two-hour show? Listen, this show is two hours. AW Dark. It's an hour and a half. I'm sorry. Hour third. Yeah. Um, you know, do you need it? Does it hurt your product? Does it help your product? I don't. I would say they don't need it, but I understand for TV rights and things like that, it comes into play. So, okay, I don't know. I I, I don't really watch Dark to be like I'll I'll watch clips of it if I hear there's a good match or something, but I just don't have it in my time frame to watch it. Would you be more interested in a second network AEW show formatted more like a combination of BTE and Lucha Underground? I don't know. I, I, you know, BT is another thing that they have that that's another property of theirs, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't. We'll see what happens. But do you need an? I listen. Maybe I'm just being selfish. I, I can't use another night of wrestling. <laughs> I can't. I hear you. No, I understand. You know? I, I, I hear you. Like, we have to cover it. I think I got, in, I got into a conversation the other night on Twitter where folks who were on our feed were saying, is Raw watchable? You know? Oh, yeah. That was an and, interesting conversation. And I'm kind of like, well, I have to watch it. So I'm kind of removing myself from this equation, you know? but Because you watch you it think, differently. I watch it differently. I got to do the show. I got to talk to you um, every week. I got to talk to our uh, our amazing fans every week. Um, so I feel like I have to watch wrestling. Do I want to watch wrestling sometimes? No, definitely not. On Monday, usually like at about nine o'clock, I just want to shut my brain off. Yeah, but you know and why, though? I'm going to tell you, I, I think yeah. if Raw, again, this whole two hour thing, right? And, and I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to be able to go two hours, but... A two hour show is so much easier to watch because the pacing is different. Yes. You know, three hours is a lot to consume. It's a lot of filler and it's a lot of information that I need to now take mm -hmm. in. Uh, I I find it difficult for sure because it's a three hour show and it's yeah. not a very quick three hours. It's it, it, There's a lot of low points in that show. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's an easy. They don't make it easy. Let me just say that. I'll agree they with you. They don't make it easy. They definitely don't. Monday nights are hard. Um, sometimes I do personally find NXT a little hard to get through, but you have two shows that look super easy. AEW is always a quick watch, and so is SmackDown. SmackDown has been very tight lately. And I watch SmackDown you... every week easily, easily without having to, you know, watch after the fact and fast forward mm -hmm. or any. It's a much easier show to consume. Same here. Um, I think it's it's very well timed. The promos are great. The wrestling is great. Uh, last Friday SmackDown was fantastic, and you know it's it's its own little show in a bubble. The issue, I think, again, I'm gonna I'm kind of gonna pigtail uh, piggyback on your point about AEW and having another show is that look at the results of what happened yesterday. They crammed so much stuff into two hours that I think a secondary show might be able. To let that initial two hour show breathe a little bit, hmm. if you understand what I'm, what I'm saying, yeah. you know, because like if you look if you look at our notes, right, immediately you have, I'm going to go through it real quick. You had the pack Kingston match. You had Adam Page uh, teasing joining the Dark Order, uh, Miro squashing Chuck T. You had the swerve between the Good Brothers and um, the Bucks, right? Oh, yeah. Which we'll talk about that bunch of moxley stuff you had an amazing women's title match you had the new Britt baker segment with cody rhodes jade cargill shows up thunder rosa calls people out you know like calls um Britt baker out and then you had brian cage and darby allen sting shows up it's that's a lot of stuff that, that is a lot of stuff. In two hours you know it's a whole lot of stuff and it's great you know like i enjoyed it but i think a, a secondary show will let all this stuff breathe a little bit more you know hmm. 
Interesting. I don't know. I don't know what the answer here is. Uh, so we got, and I'm not going to run down this whole show, but it was it was a decent show. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a interesting moment with the Bucks and the Good Brothers. So essentially, yes. uh, there was a swerve where it was supposed to be the good, uh, the elite teaming up together, and I guess Callus came out, cut a promo introducing the tag team champions of the world, and it wasn't the Bucks; it was the Good Brothers, and we had their AEW debut match. Fantastic. You know what? <laughs> it, it is. It's amazing how this played out, right? Yes, I mean, from the yes. time that these guys left, so many people were so disappointed that they re-signed with WWE. They thought, you know, these guys leaving, going to Japan, uh, and AEW would be the answer here. And they ended up not doing either one. Obviously, mm. it's a pandemic. They can't go to Japan, but they didn't go to Japan immediately. They didn't go to AEW. They went to Impact Wrestling, and people were like, why the hell would they do this? Well, I guess now we know. Yeah, uh, very cool. Um, as a fan, I totally mark out moments just because of like, you know, this this is the type of stuff where like, I'll watch it, enjoy it, and look forward to covering it on our podcast. Um, just because of like the history between all these guys and how it's playing out on TV. It's very, this is like, this is akin to that late 90s male soap opera kind of thing that people put on pro wrestling yeah what do you think about that right like you're like oh what's gonna happen what's gonna happen like these guys are here who's gonna who's gonna backstab who who's gonna backstab who you know yeah I and think it's this was, yeah th it's exactly that this was exactly what you said it, it was it was very pro wrestling it was a swerve coming f you know you kind of saw it you don't know where people are gonna fall you mm -hmm. don't now i mean but now think of the matches that we have oh yeah I, I mean, we could have a, a title for title match, which I think we will see impact champions versus uh, AEW champions. I think that's coming and we have hard to kill coming this Saturday, this Saturday, hard to kill. Uh, this will probably be one of the most ordered impact pay-per-views of all time in a, long, uh, in a long time. They did actually great with that show a couple. Of, when, when was that really good impact show that they did three weeks ago? No, no, no. It was a pay-per-view. Was it Slammiversary? Oh. I think it was Slammiversary. Uh, it was one of the most ordered shows in recent, I mean, in recent years. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was. Uh, so here, here's a hard-to-kill preview, uh, which I'm going to be ordering. I'm going to be watching. You're getting a new announced team of Matt Stryker. Bayside Queens' his own Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown. I'm curious to see how this team does. Uh, so you got Stryker and D'Lo. You got Tommy Dreamer, Rhino, and Cousin Jake versus Eric Young, uh, Joe uh, Doring. Is it Joe Doring? I can't zoom in on this. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wrote uh, his extra small. He did. What the <laughs> hell? He, he literally copied and pasted. I'm looking at the show notes. Just copied and pasted an image. Uh, old school, <laughs> it's an old school rules match. You got Ethan Page versus Karate Man. Uh, Sammy Callahan versus Eddie Edwards in a barbed wire massacre match. Now it's way bigger. Uh, Deanna Parazzo versus Taya, uh, Taya Valkyrie for the Knockout Championship. Tasha Steele, Kira Hogan. I wonder if she's going to change her name when she goes somewhere else. You think so? I don't know. Uh, who else is in this? He just It's all white now. Can you see this? Uh, Manic versus Chris Bay yeah. versus Rohit there Raju for the X Division. I could barely read this. For the X Division. <laughs> Thank you so much, MG Geek. <laughs> Mr. Go is this the monkey wrench that Mr. Gonzo is trying to throw yeah. into the show? Just I think so. small text, small text everywhere. And then obviously you know, we're getting no more small yeah. text. <laughs> no more small text, guys. Uh, Kenny and Megan, the Good Brothers versus uh, Rich Swan and the Motor City Machine Guns. It's so small, dude. I just want to tell you, I know, <laughs> I know it's Rich Swan, but my mind, my mind went to Ron Swanson. Oh, that'd be amazing. So it, I was about to say it's Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers versus Ron Swanson and the Motor City Machine Guns, which I would pay money to see that match. And I think we're going to get some AEW appearances here. Uh, oh, I, I think so. You think uh, you think the Bucks are going to show up and kind of just to, to quote unquote cheer them on and then end up super kicking have, everybody? They have, they have to do it. Yeah. They have to do it. So listen, man. Uh, awesome. It, it, I mean, that's going to be pretty cool. Um so to kind of go back to WWE, there's a little bit of news here, and I want to get mm -hmm. your opinion on this. 
Um, so obviously there's a little bit of a COVID situation happening there. Uh, mm. There's uh, stories that it's more than just Drew that have it. So you can kind of fill in the blanks by who hasn't been on TV and who has been on TV. Uh, you're going to see that. Rumble's taking place without fans. I know this was a mm-hmm. big question we've been getting for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I think a couple of weeks ago, we said, you know, listen, the closer we get to this, the more the likelihood of them having a live audience for Rumble is getting less because yeah. the numbers are not great. Uh, you know, all across the country, it's not great. So it's not like they're going to they're gonna want to do that now. But also, logist- logistically, to bring people into the Thunderdome to kind of put it... I'm sorry. Are you falling asleep? I, I'm dying here. And he call, uh, I'm, I'm, my eyes are on fire because I turned the air conditioner on in the studio and it blew something. So I'm, I'm, I may be melting right now. Um, but the logistics of taking apart that Thunderdome or reinventing, redoing the Thunderdome to fit people in doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. It looks, I mean, I would imagine that WrestleMania may do it. And then we're going to, the, the, the rumor was, right? That after WrestleMania they're going to be touring again somewhat, but where the hell are they going to go? And they got to get out of the get out of that uh, Tropicana Field because baseball's starting. Yeah, in January. Uh, in, in April. <laughs> Isn't it, it, yeah. So where the hell are they going to go? This is going to be a big problem, a- and I don't know what the answer here is because what's available, right? Mm-hmm. I think the question is going to be what's available for them to use. A baseball stadium is not going to be available for them to use because guess what? Baseball's back. Basketball right. is not going to be available for them to use because basketball is back. So now right. where are you going to go? You're going to go to a college building, right? You're going to possibly go to a college. That kind of makes sense. Or some random outdoor venue. I mean, indoor, outdoor venue. I don't know. I don't know where the next possible step for them is if they're not mm-hmm. doing a live audience and touring. So that's a big question here. It's a the tremendous question here. I, d- dude, you know what, though? Somebody said, well, they could always go back to the Performance Center. I don't think they, yeah. they can at this point. No. I don't think they can go back to the Performance Center because, obviously, the Performance Center has the look now, and, and it's a much better outfitted place for them to mm-hmm. be than it was before they left. But, you know, you, you made a big deal about going, to, going into the Thunderdome, and it kind of revitalized the product, really, from being the stagnant, stale thing that you watch every week. They got to go somewhere else. I don't know what the answer here is. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of interesting how they're, they're so up. WWE is so up in the air about this. Maybe they'll build another structure. Maybe. You know, like if they have some kind of like land deal or property deal, they can build another structure easily. Um, they don't have the fortune of having like a, like a location like Daly's Place, even though it's outdoors, which I feel like in the next month, it might be a little more on the well, they're leaving. side. They're leaving. They're going to Miami. Okay. Yeah. AEW is going right. to be leaving Daly's Place for a little bit uh, and going somewhere else because it is getting a little cold there. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But. Uh, COVID outbreak in WWE, and then there was news that came out this week that uh, was it Nick that had COVID? Nick had COVID a while ago in September. And he said it, yeah, and he said it really, it really KO'd him for a while. Yeah, uh, and Jericho had it also in September, and he said he was asymptomatic and he really didn't feel much. Um, but you know, he and a lot of people were speculating as to when the hell he would have had it because he was on TV. But I think people are forgetting they were filming a bunch of stuff in one shot at that point yeah. in September. So listen, I I I expect AEW was like, okay, uh, he's sick, he's not coming on TV. They're not gonna they're not gonna sacrifice and risk uh, people's health. And of course, the perception mm. of having Chris Jericho there with COVID doesn't. I mean, they're a lot smarter than that. So I'm not I'm not very concerned with yeah, what they it- did in the handling, especially since he had that concert that ended up being at a super spreader. When was Sturgis? I well, he was off AEW for like two or three weeks, right? And I think part of that reason was him doing like a mini tour with Fozzie. He did Sturgis in in August. It was like August seventh okay. to the sixteenth. So whatever date that would have been. I mean, it's obviously it's not Jericho's fault that that event became a super spreader, but I feel like now it's just associated with him. Yeah, by default, you know, well, a lot and of like, things. A lot of things are associated with Jericho right now, right? You know, yeah. and it's it's kind of, it's kind of bizarre. 
You know? yeah. Like we don't have to get into all that stuff, but I, I think it's like, um, it's very interesting to say the it, least. Yes. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And then now there's contract situ- There's a contract issue going on, right? Rumors came out this week, and I want to I want to talk about this a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, because this is an interesting conversation. When you have yeah. guys and you're hearing rumors about contracts being open and where people go, a lot of people were under the impression that that mostly a lot of these WWE guys were locked in. You know, mm-hmm. when AEW came in, WWE did a great job at locking people into longer term deals, so they don't, uh, so they don't jump over somewhere else. We saw how that backfired with the pandemic and them having to cut, at, you know, tremendous amount of people and everybody's mm-hmm. all over the place. But you got a couple names here that's interesting. Uh, Ricochet is one name that's coming up. Yeah. And people are saying how he has not re-signed his contract. And Matt Riddle has apparently not re-signed his contract. I don't know about Riddle no. because I thought Riddle had more time left. Um, but Ricochet is a name that we have been talking about forever on how you want to talk about mishandling a guy in a company. Right. Yeah. And how hot this guy was. I never listen. I never expected Vince to be like that guy. I'm putting the belt on him. He's the future of this company. But right, he is. I mean, you look. You look at a guy and you're like, oh, you want to get younger fans. You want to bring more excitement. It's right. this dude right here. He's like a Absolutely. superhero. Um, he goes to he NXT. That. Yeah. He goes to NXT. Very short period of time. He was in NXT. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does the North American title stuff. He doesn't really do anything in a main title picture. They bump him right up to the main roster. And once he's on the roster, what do they do with him? Not much. Yeah, it's very unfortunate because, like, we've been hot on this guy for a while, you know. And, you know, you really got to see him shine in New Japan. Um, And then when he came to NXT, we were excited, you know, because, like, when he came to NXT, it was that that rebuilding phase, you know, that the NXT of old used to do where, you know, when your top guys left, they would have to fill those spots. Finn Balor left. They filled that spot with uh, Samoa Joe and Nakamura. Nakamura, Samoa Joe leave. They filled it with Bobby Roode, Drew McIntyre, Andrade, et cetera. You know, yeah. um, Ricochet on the main roster, kind of a flub, unfortunately, because when you have a guy with such a dynamic style that Ricochet does and they throw him on the main roster, he, uh, the guy who could do the moonsault is just like everybody else on the roster, you know, so mm-hmm. they haven't really showcased exactly what this guy could do. I think he'd be better off somewhere else as a fan. Dude, what great. You want to know the comparison here? Look at Will Ospreay. He just had a match with Okada. Right. Okay. And look at where Ricochet is. Just those two mm-hmm. were being compared in such a parallel way four mm-hmm. years ago. Right. <clears throat> absolutely when did they do that flippy thing that the internet lost their minds and they said this is the end of pro wrestling 2017 2016 i, I want to say yeah 2017 and the internet lost their freaking minds on how it's all over they, they blew the business kayfabe is dead because they're doing flips so oh, so stupid <laughs> so look from that point on where their career paths went mm-hmm. uh will osprey is is getting slowly in that main event title picture situation at new Japan yeah. and Ricochet got rid of his pants. Right. <clears throat> it's, uh, just I, I don't th- wild. I think he's, he is, his talents are better served elsewhere. And at this point he can go anywhere and make it and make a positive impact for any company. AW sure. New Japan. Boom. One more time. Right. Ring of honor. Cool. Uh, MLW. This guy could show up fantastic right he would be a great addition to any locker room i just think he's unfortunately one of those guys that got swept under the rug for longer than he should have you know um and i'll parallel cedric alexander to that too he was a hot signing after that cruiserweight classic right like he blew everybody away who was was cedric cedric and it was a slow burn for him and now they're actually kind of doing something with him in the Hurt Business, which I think is a great faction to get these guys over again. You know what? You know? Very good faction. It's a great faction. Great yeah, faction. Yeah. Um, and, and it works. It, yeah. Listen, it's working for who knows. I mean, listen, we know why, mm-hmm. right? It, it's the it just it, it's when things click, things click and things move very quickly. Right. Um, 
and, and they put together a really good group of guys that that work mm-hmm. well together that makes sense um but you got to really look at you know to look at this year and, and to judge WWE is really hard you you really can't mm-hmm. and it makes it makes it difficult for us because a lot of this is looking back at certain things that they've done over the year or so mm-hmm. and saying like well they got this right they didn't get this right i can't point where they went wrong this year because of everything that happened but i could tell you Guys like Andrade, Ricochet, Aleister Black, uh, yeah, their careers grinded to a halt. Yes, uh, and listen, a lot of that has to do with Paul Heyman, right? And, and Paul getting out of the creative on Raw. But I don't, I don't know how you could take proven entities like Aleister Black. And Ricochet. Forget about Alice. For, let's take Ricochet out of this because I could come okay. up with the excuses of of you know apologists saying, well, this is why Ricochet didn't work. But you look at Alistair mm-hmm. Black, and you okay. know that you had something very special with this guy. 100%. Uh, in NXT, between the intro and the in-ring and just the, the, the overall look and presentation, you're like, okay, you know mm-hmm. what? This is something special. How do you break that? Well, well, leave it to the WWE and they'll they'll break it. They'll do like it almost seems like they they will do anything in their power not to have cool shit. I don't you know? think and again, I don't I don't know if we could blame those three on this year, but I could tell you with conversations that I've had with people there regularly, mm-hmm. uh even people within the writing staff that we talk to they their response is dude i don't know like it's such Mm -hmm. the person that told us about the mandalorian and sasha banks right Right. uh there's a lot like when when we read that that conversation because he said we can certain things Mm -hmm. but there was a lot that he said that i don't want to mention because it exposes people and i don't i I don't want to do that to anybody you know i don't want to i don't want to sacrifice anybody's job or anything like that but you know to to kind of sum up the conversation, it was, dude, the process is put in place with failure. The mm-hmm. way that that process is structured on getting a guy over, it's set to fail, not do well. And has right, nothing right. to do with the fans. It has and, and and by the way, it it's not Vince either, right? Unless you say Vince is the decision maker, so it is him. But it's mm-hmm. just the way that this process has become such a bureaucracy. And so large, things don't get done. And when they do, it's too late. Look at Matt Riddle. Here we go. Matt Riddle's another great example of this, right? Mm-hmm. We could talk mm-hmm. about. Uh, he uh, let's take the the uh, the uh, sexual allegations out. Let's take sure. all of that out of play, right? Because even before that, we were seeing that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, listen. If I'm a company and I'm hearing this. I'm going to want to do, and I don't, I don't know if WWE did or did not, but I would want to do a real thorough investigation. And during that process, I'm going to say, listen, let's cool off on you and then we'll figure it out. But they didn't do that. They just plowed on with the terribleness. Right, right. I, I mean, I, I can't. Somebody sent me a clip um, of hmm. the show, a new viewer, right? A new viewer to the show. And he was saying like, yeah. oh, I went down your stuff. I really liked it. It's really funny. I found an old episode where you're talking about Matt Riddle and how it's he's only had like 20 matches and how this guy's going to be better than Kurt Angle. Wow. Which we were saying that. I think Absolutely. we went we went to one of like his first couple. Ma- I mean, first couple, first 50, first 60, you know, that first year sure. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of work. And uh, we saw we saw him how many times and we we were blown away by him. We were yeah, we were blown away by him, but also I think our immediate our immediate reaction was, yeah, this guy's huge. Of course they're gonna sign him. He's gigantic. Like physically he's like a physically big person, you know? Well, and the same yeah. thing with when he's and impressive. on those shows and on those shows as well was Drew. And that was our gut reaction too. We were like, yeah, this guy's gigantic. They're gonna sign him. Exactly. We saw you know I, I don't I don't know if you went no, I don't think you came with, with us for that one. I, I took Jess to evolve. It was me, Jess. I think Ayaz came to the great Ayaz, great, great Ayaz Akhtar. Right now, by the way, Ayaz is doing some killer coverage for CNET right now for CES. This guy's been, he hasn't slept in about six days. He's just covering CNET, everything. He's just doing everything over there. Any he's tech device. CNET. Yeah, he's like, he's like, hey, hey, it's, it's a great Ayaz Akhtar. 
I got a product here that you can't miss. And then it's just a remote control, and he talks about a remote control for 35 minutes. That's all he does over no, there. Not even a good one. Just not even a good like one. A, just he's like, like he's like, like hey RCA. guys. Yeah, he's like he's like, hey guys, the great by his actor here for Cena, and check this out. And he holds something <laughs> random, and he's like, I'll be back right after this. And then he does like a whole review of a product. It's a Tamagotchi. It's a Tamagotchi. I think that's what he needs to start doing. Um, you, but, you were saying I was at that yeah. show when Drew came out from the backstage area, and we were like, yo, this dude is a thousand feet tall. <laughs> Were you, is that the one where you? I was zooming in on his butt the whole time and just posting it on the Mat Men Twitter. Were that you was at a different that one? Show. That was a no, different show. Okay, that was a different show. Yeah, but so he got up. <laughs> I, yeah, so he got up on the apron at the show and just looked at me. He's like, "How is he going to fit in that ring? Because he looks mm-hmm. so big. You know what I mean? Compared to everybody yeah, yeah. else." And I think Johnny Gargano was on that card, or mm-hmm. Roger Roddy was on the card. I can't remember. I th- it might have been both actually. But they were. I mean. It's wild the size difference. Yeah. Um let's let's get back to the Matt Riddle thing. Yeah. Um, because it's like you were saying, it seems like as from a fan's perspective, it looks like that WWE system is setting up where if you're not a chosen talent, it looks like you're being set up to fail. Um Ricochet is a good example of that. Now apparently the story is that Vince likes the humor that Matt Riddle has brought to Raw, so that's why he's on TV, as opposed to his talent, which I think is unfortunate. You know, like, where do you see Matt Riddle going in the next couple of years? Uh, I don't know. The, the rumors are that he's not, he hasn't re-signed his contract. I thought he had time on his deal, so I don't even know. Um, Ricochet is very possible he's running out of time and he hasn't re-signed, and he wasn't out with an injury or anything for an extended period mm-hmm. of time, so I think he's coming to an end. Listen, man, I think he needs to do what's best for him. You know, what do you think is going to be great for his career? What's going to be, be- best for his career? Uh, I, is it staying at WWE and collecting the money and knowing that, you know, you got you got something, you got a machine behind you that's going to keep paying you and put you on TV mm-hmm. and be profiled? You know, like we were talking about Jay White last week, for example. Yes. Uh, I We got a lot of emails on this. I said, I think Jay White should go to WWE. Mm-hmm. And people are like, why? Why would he go to WWE? And I think it, it it just to to get over to that level where you become this. And I think Jay White's going to be this mega star. I, I think, you know, you look at how Seth Rollins became a star in WWE. I think Jay White's okay. capable of that, especially in WWE. But mm-hmm. where do you think he's going to get the most exposure, be able to kind of grow into this, you know, top level character? Is it AEW or is it is it WWE? I personally think he's staying in New Japan. I, I listen. I I think this is all a work. Also, I don't know if you yeah. saw this today. Sean Ross Sapp reported that um, he's off the New Japan roster or on their website. They removed him from the website. Yeah, I think he's taking time off um, because and I'll tell you why. I I saw this from kind of. I don't want to say a reliable source, but okay. something was rebrought to my attention. Where I was like, okay, and it sounded very familiar that four years ago he signed a seven year deal. So Jay White might still have three years on his contract in New yeah, Japan. B- I believe Dave said that Jay White had mentioned to him that he had he had a seven year contract. I think that's a crazy mm-hmm. long contract. I don't even know if they they've ever done that. I, I think it could just be a, you know a joke, or it could be right. Because they don't, Japan doesn't do long term deals like that. It was yearly, and then they started doing two year deals. I can see a three year deal, but would you want to sign a seven year contract? I think. Well, you have to also think like at that point he was Jay White's twenty eight now, so four years ago he would have been twenty four, right? And if you're twenty four, oh, oh, they're saying that he signed it four years ago, right? So he has three more years on that deal. Apparently, again, this is just kind of like this is not for sure, sure. But it was familiar enough to think like this whole thing's a work and he still has a few years on that deal, you know, because like when that deal is over, he's going to be 31 still, re- still regardless, very young, still super young yeah. and probably going to be even better than he is now. You know, like yeah. he's I feel like Jay White is like the, one of the new Japan prodigies, you know? Yeah. L- listen, to, I, th- I think he's he's a pro wrestling prodigy. Um, I. I I gave this example, and I, I, I'm gonna to, to the person I was having a conversation with, and and mm. you guys let me know what you think. If Seth Rollins 
right? If AEW existed when Seth Rollins decided to go to WWE from Ring of Honor, where mm-hmm. would he have done better? Going to WWE or AEW? It's WWE. the answer is WWE. It's yeah, a machine. 100%. If if you don't have that exposure mm-hmm. in the state, and listen, I'm not saying that this is going to happen or anything. I, I listen, I could be wrong and it doesn't matter. If I'm wrong, it's even better for Jay White. But WWE does have an ability if they see it in you, they could turn you into a tremendous tremendous blockbuster star. Well, if they I want to. If they want to. And I think at this point in the in the modern history of WWE, you're either going to be a Vince guy or a Triple H guy, right? And if you're in either one of those, you're going to get pushed to the moon. Great example, Finn Balor. If Finn Balor wasn't a Triple H guy, he probably would have gotten lost in the shuffle. Comedy from, angles. From day one with comedy angles, right? Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, I think, is a Triple H guy. You know, he's been a fixture on WWE television for the last, like, what, like three, three, four years, maybe? Yeah. Um, And Seth Rollins, I think. Seth Rollins is like the ultimate Triple H guy. Right, because I remember when they signed Tyler Black, it, it was, was such a, a lot big of, deal. Yeah. Such a big deal, and a lot of interviews with Triple H saying like he's got an attitude problem, but we can mold him into one of the greats, and that's what they did. You know, like they they took him and they put the machine behind it, like you were just saying, and they shot him to the moon. You know, like how great. Um, we always talk about like great moments in pro wrestling. Uh, in the modern day, I think Seth cashing in at WrestleMania easily top 10 you know what i i would say i would say that would definitely be one of those moments right because it's a moment Mm -hmm. that you remember the fact that you're bringing it up now kind of shows how much emphasis should be put on that moment uh that was that was a real big display you know you had two shield guys in that match against brock lesnar Uh, i don't think anybody wanted to see either one of them win i think people were genuinely surprised and that works Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a swerve. It was a genuine surprise when his music kid, he came out with a briefcase, even though he's a heel and he just got murdered by Rainy Orton earlier in the night. You you, you applauded right. this. You wanted to see this happen. Exactly. Uh, the other and I want to kind of bring up another point as far as like contract signings go. Um, remember when Ibushi was in the Cruiserweight Classic and refused to sign a deal with WWE and people thought he was crazy, right? They thought and he was nuts, look- yeah. And look where that dude is now. You know what? That's actually another great example. Ibushi, if he had signed mm-hmm. with them, he would have been used for that 205 division. You know what you would have been seeing? Ibushi versus Enzo? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the matches you were getting. You were, you were going to get Ibushi versus Enzo Amore for, for that title. Do you think that I want you to think about that of his career where like he would have gotten that cruiser belt and then he would be fighting? Um, I mean, like that 205 roster was fantastic, don't get me wrong. You yeah, know? no, but great talent. Would you, it would be Ibushi versus Enzo, Ibushi versus Davari, Ibushi, Ibushi versus um, Brian Kendrick, you know, Ibushi, on like a yeah, loop. yeah, yeah, so Graham I, I think, yeah, Grand Metal League. I I find that very interesting. And then he would show up on NXT. I feel like they would turn him into a comedy character. Abushi. I I don't know, man. I can't. I can't deal with that. But you know what I mean. Like it, it, one small decision impacts the entire trajectory. I mean, listen, it's not a small decision, but it's a minute decision in the, in the grand scheme yeah. of your life. Uh, do I take this job or not? Uh, you know. And and luckily mm. for him, it, it he didn't. And he's become, you know, the king of the hill. He's Hank Hill now. He's Hank, that's what they call him in Japan. Yeah, yeah, they call him the Hank Hill of wrestling. Dang um, it, Bobby! But, <laughs> but that's uh, pretty good. That's you want you want to hear my uh, my shocked Hank Hill voice? Please, please. Whoa! That's that's okay. I like that's I like the it. one working you did on before it. that better. Work on it. Work on it more. You don't really. You're not really, you're not, <laughs> you're not really known for your voices. In my own mind, I am. Um, you do a decent Tony Soprano. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Which we're bringing back. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing Mad Pranos soon on Patreon. <laughs> Mad Pranos on Patreon again that we've never uh, but, done. I like that we have these imaginary shows that we've never done. We'll, we'll do them. We'll do them. Um, so who else? Who else's contract is coming up? And also, I think 
what wrestling fans don't realize is what makes what makes us think that these guys are going to get immediately scooped up by AEW, where Tony Khan could turn around and say, "Hey, look, we have too many guys. Like, we they don't could, need, you know." I think a guy like Ricochet. Mojo I think a yeah. guy like no, you don't need Mojo, but I think a guy like Ricochet is special enough that you could. He would be such an amazing hand to have, right? Mm-hmm. Like you could put him anywhere on that roster, and I, and I'm, you know, even even as a as a as a mid card guy, he would be able to elevate that level of, of talent. And again, this is, this goes back to exactly what you know. You want to talk about the '80s boom, right? You want to talk about like even like the late '80s, early '90s of wrestling at their peak, yeah. 88, 89, 90. Um, that WWE mid card was stacked with top level talent. Oh my god! And, yeah. and the Attitude Era. Oh, listen, the Attitude Era is a little bit convoluted. Uh, we'll, we'll go into, but I you look at that '80s, '90s, ro- '80s, early '90s roster. That mid card was. And anybody's promotion, they would have been a world champion. There were world, oh, world champions on there. Oh, forget it. Like, you know, you it, it, unbelievably stacked. So a guy like Ricochet mm. inserting him in, in an AEW mid card uh, would be a major improvement. That's a very interesting point that you just made um, where in 80s and 90s, WWE mid card was so stacked and solid. 88 to think- 90. 88 to 91, I would say. 88 to 91. Th- their mid card was ridiculous. Was Dusty in that mid card? Yeah. Was Harley Race in that mid card and Greg Valentine? Harley wasn't Russ. Uh, Harley would have been 87, 88. Perfect. Uh, you, had, you had Kurt Henning. You had Rick Rude. You had Jake Roberts. Jake. Yeah. Oh, right? heavy hitters. And yeah. then, and then you, you slowly had uh, Bret Hart enter that in, in 90, 90, 91. You had uh, Tito Santana. Luger. Yeah. Luger 93, but forget about forget about the bad years, right? I'm only going like 88 to mm-hmm. 90, uh, 87 to 90. Uh, Boss Man was a draw. Bad oh News Brown, Piper. You had such a tremendous yeah. mid card that didn't even matter if they were facing Hulk Hogan for the title because nobody was facing Hulk, but they had to do it due to necessity because you couldn't have people right. lose to Hogan. You right, didn't right, want right. to. You didn't want to have Jake Roberts you know, get ruined to Hogan or perfect, get ruined to Hogan. So yeah. you would maybe Hogan. do it on a house show, but you wouldn't have it be a program. So you kept yeah. these guys in the mid card. Jake Roberts never held a freaking title in WWE, but yet he's one of the most memorable guys of all time in that company's history. Absolutely. Same thing with Mr. Perfect. You know? Henning, same thing. Yeah. Um, so do you, so you think a AEW going forward that they should structure that mid card. I guess their mid card would be the TNT championship. Right. It's a TNT championship, but they already have somewhat of that. You know, you look at this like mm. Brian, you brought you put a tweet out saying, you know, where does Brian Cage go from here? I agree with For, you. By the way, that match was yeah. great. I love that match. However, match is awesome. Yeah. Um, what does this mean for Brian Cage? I get I get the 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 rocket to Darby Allen, right? There's there's a mm-hmm. demo that is very much into the character. And I think Darby Allen this year will be what uh what orange cassidy was becoming before the pandemic just like completely on fire like you know what there's a there's a younger demo that's really into him okay i think Uh, i i'll I'll agree with that um i think darby is with that belt i feel like he's set to be kind of like their version of like a young jericho or like a young edge I you don't, know, like I don't mid know. card for a few years and then main event. At some I point. don't think Darby Allen should listen. I don't know. I'm not going to say anybody should or shouldn't, but I right. don't think it makes sense for him to be in a world title positioning. There is no okay. I, I don't find that to be a, a likely or smart scenario. I, 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 I just don't. I don't think the style works. I don't think it, it, it works on that level. OK, but but here's the other problem, right? So. He's facing Brian Cage. Brian Cage is a gigantic right. human being. Yes. I don't think Brian Cage should be feuding with Darby Allen. Even though the match was fine, it was good. It was okay. it was it was a pretty cool match. I don't I don't like it because you're now telling me that this gargantuan sized human being that's a mm-hmm. really good wrestler lost to somebody that's 100 pounds lighter than him. You already uh-huh. set up that story. 
So does but this hurt Brian Cage or does this not do anything? Does this elevate Darby Allen? I think it elevates Darby because he's getting a big rub from Sting too. But oh yeah. You know, like, what do you do if you're Brian Cage? You just lost to a guy that's 170 pounds soaking wet. I think I think that win loss, quote unquote, burial mentality. We're so conditioned by WWE where when we see it on TV and rightly so, we're like, oh, this guy's done. You know, like this guy's going to be on main event for the next like two years. Right. I think with AEW, they do a good job of like wins and losses don't really hurt the guy. And I think that program I really like. But my the 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 reason I I wanted to put that question out there was here's a guy who has the looks the charisma the talent where where do you put him now you know like is this feud with Darby done uh, is he gonna defend that FTW title you know it's kind of like the show is so jam packed already like where do you put this guy I don't know. Um... You know, I would have him start defending that FTW title more and just do his own thing until you figure out where you're going to put him and have him in, you know, have him win his matches. I, I know that they've been doing that. His record is solid because they keep showing it. But I, I and, and this is this is the other thing, right? AEW has a pretty decent mid card. If you think about yes. it, they got a very 100%. strong mid card uh, between Pac, Eddie Kingston, Darby Allen. Uh, mm. Nick Cage, Nick Cage, uh, Brian Cage. Nick Cage is not there. You know what? Hey, I kind of want. I kind of want to see Nick, not Nicholas Cage. Yes, the Nicholas Cage. Who am I wrestling tonight? <laughs> oh, this guy. Uh, I, I, I like, I like that. I like that Nick Cage. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, but I don't know beyond. Like, I think it's cool that they're they got such a strong mid card that I want to mm -hmm. see. But now, like, okay, when you take a guy, you pluck him out, and you say, okay, now he's going to the main event picture. You better mm -hmm. do a good job with plucking that guy out, and he doesn't look like a total dope, because now coming back down, it becomes a problem. Okay. Fair enough. You know, but I, also, I, you, you have Brian Cage in a faction, too, which I think helps him. You know, like, specifically, like, him, the team of him and Ricky Starks is phenomenal. Yeah. I'm into it. I like it a lot. Guys, Q&A time. Let's do our Q&A segment. If you're watching this live in the chat room, we're live each and every week on Thursdays at 11 a.m. East. You could uh, join the chat and submit your questions there. Uh, if you are listening to this after the fact, hey, guys, be sure to subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available on uh, Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, anywhere. Choose, Pick your favorite podcast app, put in Matt Men Podcasts, and subscribe to us. Also here on YouTube, you could subscribe to us here. Uh, the show's available. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. And also, we have a Patreon. If you enjoy the show, you could fund us for as little as $1 per episode. Patreon.com slash Podcast. You can go there and fund us there. Uh, guys, submit your questions, and we'll do our best to answer them. Rich, you want to pick some? All right. John Gorman, what did you guys make of the Sammy and T-Bar exchange? Did T-Bar work himself into a shoot? That was um, bizarre. Yeah, it was bizarre. Apparently, uh, Sammy Guevara tweeted at him about a finishing move, and I don't know what happened with T-Bar or whatever. Uh, I don't know, man. I think that stuff is bizarre. I feel like, from again, from a fan's perspective, uh, it seems like Retribution is just in, like, there's a weird hole that is going to be impossible to come out of. And speaking of contracts, apparently these guys' contracts are up too. Who? Uh, at least Retribution. I think I mean, Dijakovic. Dijakovic is so good. Oh, he's amazing. Like, he's a really, he's a big dude. And mm. they shaved his head and they put a freaking mask on him. I, I, I bizarre. I, I listen, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of that whole retribution thing. I thought it was going to be something very different than it is. Yes. Um, but, you know, it wasn't even the samey thing mm -mm. with, uh, with T-Bar. You know what, what really was bizarre? With uh, what's it? Was it Dax? He went back with. Yeah, I think so. And he's like, it was one he's of, like, one I, of the, I don't know what your problem. And he's like, I don't know what your problem with me is. I don't think you ever liked me. I'm like, whoa, what's happening here? Airing their grievances. What? <laughs> and, and let me just tell you, nobody knows outside of uh, like outside of a very small group of wrestling fans about the whole like asking for permission for moves. Nobody knows about that, and nobody gives a shit. Right. Nobody cares. I, nobody cares about that. So I think maybe, I don't know how, it, I have no idea. I think maybe it was just him being funny and then it turned into something. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine anybody cares that Sammy Guevara does this move that T Bar does. Yeah, it's bizarre, man. Who knows? It's it's uh wrestling Twitter is one thing, but then like wrestling Twitter between wrestlers, that's a whole other ball game. I, I mean, did yeah. everybody ask for permission to use any of these finishers? You know, I I, right. I get it. Yeah. I, it's not even a finisher. I, I listen, if it's Steve Austin and you start doing a stunner, that's a different story. Yeah. But uh, you're doing a rock bottom. You're doing and you're calling it a rock bottom. You're not going to you're not going to go to, you know, get permission to use it or someone's going to be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't use that move. I don't think anybody cares. I think it just came off bizarre. You know, you know what I would do if I was a wrestler? What? I wouldn't ask Austin permission for the stunner. I'd ask him permission for the Luthez press. <laughs> That's the one that you would want to you want to oh. ask him. Cause I love, I love that Luthez press. Cause it was like him hitting the rope super hard and then jumping on the dude. I always thought that looked so amazing and it always popped me during a match. I never understood how he did it with the knee braces. Yeah. Cause he would his drop down on his, that could not have been comfortable for him. No, not at all. But it always looked dynamite. Sure. You could take my move kiddo. <laughs> oh, is that, oh, okay. Thanks Steve. <laughs> you sure? Absolutely. Does he say kiddo and like rough your hair up a little bit? He tussles my hair and doesn't realize I'm a 39 year old man. <laughs> Here you go, kid. Like, oh, thanks, man. I'm just a podcaster. It's okay. You could do it on your podcast. Just do it, man. You, it's all right. I give you my blessing. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right. Next question. Yeah. Work shoot wrestling podcast. Do the negative outweigh the positives? What, uh, do the negatives outweigh the positives? Should AEW sign Tessa Blanchard? I I don't know. I, it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't have an I honestly I don't have an answer. Um I, I think long term wise, yeah. I, I you know, you are you talking about just the negative attitude from Tessa Blanchard that people have talked about? Because everybody has said that there's been a major turnaround in the last, you know. Even even when everything came down last January with her getting essentially canceled uh, for for those for things that she had possibly said, allegedly said, I don't know. But mm -hmm. long term wise, yeah, she's a great talent it, and it's not it, it's it is a positive if she's turned herself around and she's a good influence on other people and could put on great matches. Yeah, I think. But. <clears throat> I think she's she is a great hand to have for anybody. I don't know where she's gonna go. I thought it was more likely WWE than anything else. Um, we're now, you know, she's been a free agent for some time now, so yeah, she hasn't gone anywhere. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that they don't want to use that now. You know, it's possible she could show up for the women's rumble and set something up. I don't sure. know if you want to bring her to the main roster. I, I do mm -hmm. think she's a main <clears throat> roster talent for WWE instead of an NXT person. I think she kind of get lost in NXT a little bit, but and sure. you put her on the main roster, the opportunity in those matches are freaking endless to have great matches. I'll agree with that. Um, I also think like, I feel like AEW won't sign her. I mean, they're really trying their best to improve that women's roster situation and uh i'm gonna use last night's match as an example serena d versus take conti was fantastic take conti how, put it's great how, how good has she gotten i think she's always been good but they really let like they really let her loose last I, night listen you know? I, I think i think she there was something there when when she first mm -hmm. came in you could tell Absolutely. that okay there's, there's talent there but holy moly yes i'm watching i'm like she has to be training like a madman yeah or a mad woman because mm -hmm. the 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 level of improvement that i've seen just even like the way she's hitting the ropes and the way she's standing yeah. up after being down those are those tiny little things that really change how good of a, a a worker you are well she was in the wwe system for a while right i, I don't know how long she was there which yeah maybe a couple of years now or she a year was and right a half. She was in developmental, but I think the way WWE works is like she's a legit like trained fighter, right? And I think the way WWE works is like, oh, that's great, you can do karate, but can you do the pro wrestle? And I think they can don't you do like the pro to, wrestle. Yeah, they don't like to have that 
that realness sometimes, but last night's match proved otherwise. You know, like she could work in that shoot fighting style into a pro wrestling match and have it look awesome. Yeah. Um, you ready to move on to another question? Let's do. By the way, Tay Conti was a uh, borderline, almost a Olympic level uh, jujitsu expert. There you go. So she she had participated in trials for the Brazilian Olympic team in 2016, mm-hmm. just prior to joining WWE. But you know, she has gymnastics as a background. She has, a, I mean, very well rounded athlete. The fundamentals are there. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I got actually, I got texted a question from my buddy, Alex. Oh, nice. Is, is stealing a move in wrestling like stealing a joke in comedy? <laughs> ah, that's a good question. It is a good question. Um, yes, I think it is. I think it's the same on a, on a big picture level, right? On a main level. You know, yeah. if you're, if you're on the top of that roster and all of a sudden now you start using a move, but you're not doing it out of parody or you're not, you're just doing it as you listen. Great example. Um, someone starts doing, uh, an F five, right? A big dude, uh, Wardlow's finish now is the F five and he calls, and he calls it an F five and he, you know, he's 10 F 10. He calls it an F 10. Did he steal his move? I think crea- that's creative license. I think there's such an interesting, like, gray area with pro wrestling. Like, for example, who does the Superman punch? Roman Reigns, right? That's his yeah. thing. It's okay if Orange Cassidy does it because he's a smaller dude, much like it was okay when Hurricane did the choke slam because it's parody, right? Huh. But if, let's say, Kenny Omega busts out a pedigree. Can you make a bus out of pedigree and he just he calls it something else and that's his move now? And that's his finisher. Like I, what I, I feel like the internet would explode, number one. I think the internet would explode. Uh number two, that's kind of an interesting, like for visually, from a fan's perspective, you're kind of like, oh shit, like did he just steal Triple H's move? What's the story behind this? Did he ask for permission? Which is mind boggling. But when you hear a comedian do somebody else's joke, I feel like you're not like, oh, did he ask permission? You're like, oh, did no, he, he stole it. Yeah, he stole it. Did he asked Jerry Seinfeld if he could do that joke about airline food, you know? Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal? Um. Okay. So I feel like it's kind of, it's on the same level, you know, in a, in a weird way. In a weird uh, way. Let's see. Uh, Charlie Orr, what is the direction as far as the location for WrestleMania? Is it confirmed for Tampa Bay? And will there be fans? Um, uh, it was. I mean, as far as I know, they were going to do Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been very. He, here's the thing, right? It's been very quiet, okay. and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Generally, when things are quiet, I, I take it that they have an idea. That, and that, that's me saying it. I'm not saying that. That's that's a. I, I feel like whenever. Things slow down a little bit with the chatter. That means that they have the plan. They're sticking to it, and the, you know it's going to get unveiled soon. I don't know. I, I think it is possible to have fans, but I, we were supposed to have fans in July, guys, and then in right. September we were supposed to have fans. And right. and it's not it's not that it's bad information and people are leaking stuff that that they shouldn't be. I, I just mm-hmm. think it's it's the logistics of pulling this off with fans in the middle of a global pandemic. Regardless of right. how you feel about this pandemic, the reality is people are getting sick. So does WWE want to be perceived as somebody that that put, you know, 30, 40,000 people at risk? Right. Listen, we've seen college. Fo- we've seen football, for example, mm-hmm. 14, 15, 16,000 people. Uh, I, I think that we hit 30,000 in certain buildings, mm-hmm. but it's a team rather than the WWE. You know, WWE does it. I feel like it would right. be way more eyeballs saying like this is irresponsible than the nfl doing it just uh, just how wwe is perceived it's oh, the absolutely. same thing at the end of the day you're putting a bunch of people in a building with mm-hmm. the likely with with a risk of getting sick um i'm leaning towards wwe will have people at wrestlemania to some extent but if they yeah. are they got to call it now because how the hell are you going to sell tickets right well i mean with no I travel think that's- Oh my God. I think, but I think that's built in. I think people will find a way to get there. You know, people will drive, they'll hitchhike, they'll do what they can. But I think it's built in if they were like, hey, uh, we're, we're 
we're doing our show at an 80,000 seat arena. We're only selling 10,000 tickets. I feel like it would sell out in like two seconds, you know, because people want to go back to their sense of normalcy and see live events again. Um, but you're right. WWE would be would come under a lot of intense scrutiny just because they're who they are. Yeah. Um, if they did, honestly, like if, <clears throat> excuse me, if they did um, a structure like the bubble uh, for NBA where they had like a nice open area where you could have people in attendance, like limited with the screens on top, kind of like what they what they they've done for NXT, but a little bigger. I think yeah. that would make more sense, you know, and that that would be a lot more fun. It would add a different level to it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I we'll see. I mean, listen, whatever the answer is, we're gonna get it in the next month, mm-hmm. three to four, three to six weeks or so, because you have no other choice. You're gonna have to address this, and then you're gonna have to address what the plan is moving forward. Uh, it's January fourteenth now. The mm-hmm. Tropicana needs to be occupied and get ready for baseball. Yeah. And they're probably going to need it soon. Right? When when do you think they get... Wh- Actually, Bob Rowe in our chat room, uh, he would have the answer to this. When are they going to start going back into their stadiums for baseball? Mm-hmm. Probably sometime in February. You're going to have to get the logistics worked out and the building and, and go mm-hmm. through the proper steps that you're going to have to take to bring people into these uh possible stadiums so it, it, it you you're gonna need time we'll see what happens i don't, i i i think this is going to be you want to talk about the convolutedness and the confusion that's going to surround i think this is going to be the most confusing time period when everything oh, yeah. is coming back and they don't have a location to hold a residency that's going right. to become a problem absolutely um next question yes John Gorman, would you? What do you make of Roman Reigns versus Adam Pearce, and do you think that match sticks, or is it just part of the story to do Roman versus KO at the Rumble? Uh, I, go ahead. I lost my. Sh- I lost my shit when when you, you got a- Adam Pearce in the main event of SmackDown last week. At the beginning Dude, of the show, I was like, "Yo, are they gonna let Scrap Daddy wrestle?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I- I'm okay with. Listen, it- interesting, right? I- I'm. I want to see that match. People mm-hmm. are like, I don't want to see that match. I'm like, I want to see that match. Absolutely. That's a treat for me to see Adam Pierce have. I mean, think about it. Adam Pierce in a main event match with Roman Reigns in 2021. Not mm-hmm. a prediction I could have seen at all. However, not at all. You know what? What if you have Pierce come out there and come out in his regular wrestling gear, comes out and has a really good freaking match? You're like, holy crap, what the hell just happened? I would love to see that. And listen, the dude is a multiple time NWA champion. Yes. So why not, man? Why not? Finally, they're like, uh, Vince looked at him one day and was like, hey, you're a pretty big guy. Did you ever think about wrestling? And then he just gives him like an old VHS tape. Yeah, here you go. Watch me and Daniel Bryan. Bryan Danielson have a match. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's a road. You're going to get the match. You're also probably going to get Roman versus KO and Roman versus Nakamura. It looked like Nakamura turned face on SmackDown. Yes, Um, he turned face. They're finally, I think his contract's coming up and they're finally putting him, they're shining him on a good light because they want to keep him. Is it coming up? But wait a minute, is it coming up? I think so. Because I was told he re-signed with them. There was, no, he re-signed when AEW existed. Really? Or, Or coming into existence. Huh. Because the answer was that he likes being where he is and, and that, you know, his family's here mm-hmm. and he likes to surf. He has a really cushy position there at that company. And he's comfortable. So I, I would be shocked if that's true, because I was under the impression that he had signed that. Could, I mean, that could have been two years ago. Right. Right. I mean, it's possible it could have been two years ago. I may, Listen, maybe it is coming up. Maybe you are right. Maybe my years are. My timeline is all warped because of being in, inside all, all the time. You're still in the coma. I'm still, dude, I have not left. I'm, I got microdosed, and this is where I'm living now. So this is um, all fake. Another question here. With Trump out of office soon, do you think any of the restrictions will tighten in Florida that could affect wrestling? Um, I, th- <sighs> I Listen, anything is possible, right? I, I, I don't know, but... I I am going to say that more people, especially more states are now understanding the detriment to the economy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even here in New York, 
our governor that has been very much about closing closing things down. He's saying, no, it's time to open up businesses, not close businesses. Less restriction is needed because mm-hmm. the states are going bankrupt with no tourism. No, you know, they're going to start they're hemorrhaging right now because they're not able to collect taxes the way that they were. So I don't I, I don't see it being unless you do a hundred hundred day shutdown, you know, unless you do something like that, which would be. Yeah, uh, that would that wouldn't be so great. But I don't I would be shocked if there are more restrictions being put in place now. But I'll just say that. Yeah, 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 I would be really surprised. Uh, MLB schedule begins on four one, so that makes sense. They got to be out of that Thunderdome right after WrestleMania. Right. Okay. So we're back to that timeline. I guess it is an accurate timeline because by four one, they got to be out of there, or or at least that first week they got to be out of there because baseball starting. Uh, here's another question that's yeah. kind of pertinent to what you were just talking about from Eric. Do you think Cuomo would let WWE use the Nassau Coliseum? It's empty and the owners pretty much said they were bankrupt. Islanders are playing there. Okay. Right. Because Belmont's not going to be uh, their new, their new stadium is not going to be completed. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. You know what? It is interesting that they that New York Cuomo allowed Buffalo to run with 6,700 fans last Saturday. Uh, they they said this is somewhat of a pilot program. And the procedures that they're putting in place here is what they're going to be doing at the garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the rumors are that the Rangers are going to have people at the garden uh, in probably April ish, May ish. They're looking to have people for hockey. So I think this is somewhat of a pilot program. I think it's possible. I know WWE really wants to be at the garden in September. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've heard, I mean, I've heard that from numerous people from within MSG and within the company. So as far as we know, probably July and August, you're going to see people back in these buildings, right? We're going to see that. It's just a matter of what, what, what capacity? Limited capacity. I would say 50%, and then you could slowly bump it. I mean, uh, you know, by, by September, you're going to have Broadway come back. So, and you can't have Broadway at 50% capacity. A lot of this, listen, a lot of this is financial, right? Does it make sense to open up your building at 50%? You know, you got to look at the pros yeah. and cons of operating costs. So for maybe, maybe for Broadway, it's not, but maybe for the Knicks, you could do 50%. Right, right, right. So I, I don't know. I, it's a lot of it. We'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, I'm hearing 500 things right now. I think a lot of people are getting very excited, but we still have a uh, about two months left to go. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on the new Shia Lee presentation? Uh, I think we need more Mortal Kombat characters. I said this last week. We did say this last week, uh, what I, which thoughts? I love it, by the way. I like I like I, I really like the gimmick. I don't know why. Oh, same here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good stuff. I, I, I like they took they took. She was just a wrestler, and I think they're molding her into something else, um, which is really cool, especially for the NXT women's roster. Um, thoughts on MSK debuting last night, the Rascals from Impact. Yeah, the Rascal. Uh, I'm curious where they go. They called them the Rascals. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. I watch it with the sound off. Oh, you did? Okay. So that's how I watch everything, actually. I watch all my TV shows with the sound off, and I just imagine what they're saying. Just lip reading? That's how I watch Game of Thrones. You that just was put whole, it together? Yeah, I just put the whole thing together. I have a very different story in my head than you do. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll uh, see. N- another question from Work Shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on MLW MLW leaning into a dead company like Lucha Underground? In say that again. Line? Say that again, Rich. I lost you in my headphone. What are your thoughts of MLW leaning into a dead company like Lucha Underground in their storylines? I don't know. You know what? I'm okay with it. I'm fine with that. I think that's pretty. It, it, I found it interesting. I gotta watch. I gotta watch it again uh mm-hmm. what they're doing here but mlw is in a very weird position and you know what they've become ring of honor now they're in the ring of honor slot if you ask me okay uh they have a better tv positioning uh, uh, as a national tv show 
mm -hmm. uh, than Ring of Honor does because Ring of Honor is all over the freaking place uh, with syndication and local, you know, local affiliates and stuff like that. Uh, I still, we still don't have a national channel. You know, you don't have a TNT to put on for Ring of Honor. Uh, and, and it's bizarre because they, they're owned by a TV network. So, right. like New York City, Ring of Honor is not in a key position here in New York City. Like, I can't tell you, I got to watch them on Comet, some, some bizarre UHF station. I mean, it's on the, <laughs> it's like, it's like a UHF station. They're really, there's no, uh, uh, Appearance and accessibility is everything when it comes to this, and they don't really have it. But MLW does with BN. Uh, BN was what Al Jazeera Sports, right? Yeah, BN was Al Jazeera Sports before, and they they like them at BN. You know, they like that they have their product. If you go to BN's website, they have real top placement on their on their website. Uh, now the big question is, okay, so how about New Japan? Where the hell's New Japan going? I'm still saying HBO Max. I I but H see they said TV in the US. Okay. So if you're going based on the purple, uh, what if it is BN? I think I may need a CB radio to tune into it. You you don't get BN sports? I don't I don't think I get BN sports now. Okay. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. I, I'm very curious where New Japan goes. Because that's gonna be interesting in what they do there. Mm -hmm. I think I think New Japan is gearing up to do their stateside experiment again, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What else do we have? Any other questions? Or are we done? Uh, we got one more. What is uh -huh. the current plan for the raw creative team with raw hitting record lows? Is a shift in order? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I I have heard nothing as far as there a shift happening. Uh -huh. uh, the last time we heard that there was a creative shift happening on Raw was when they said that they need about a year to develop new talent, and this is going to be a rebuilding year for the talent. And okay. already we've seen what, you know, I was told, when, I think it was October, that 2021, they're going to bring back a lot of older names to pump that number to, and they're going to use that to piggyback for, for newer talent. And we've already, what have we seen? We've seen Orton in a main, main position. We see mm -hmm. Triple H on TV already. We see Bill Goldberg in a title match. Uh -huh. Right, Edge is going to come back soon. Yep, we were talking about The Rock, and a lot of that right. was tentative on on uh, you know, The Rock being in front of a live audience, Flair being back on TV, Hogan being there last week doing a Legends yeah. Night. So they are yeah, going to rely on these guys. They they the and and their process this year is going to be let's bring some of these older guys to see how it goes. If they could go, like a Triple H could have a match, Bill Goldberg could have a match, Brock Lesnar. Uh, maybe you bring Cena. Sure. Cena's going to be a big one. Uh, you know, you're going to bring these guys and they're going to bring new eyeballs, but okay, then what though? What are you doing to keep them? Now what's the plan? S status quo, man. I feel like WWE has been status quo for the last, like who knows how many years where they'll, they'll kind of pop you a little bit and then they'll they pop immediately, you, yeah. they'll pull it back. You know, like Monday night's a great example. Like, did I expect to see Triple H and Randy Orton in a match? No, but you know what? That brought me, that made me stay up until 11 o'clock. I was mm. like, great. It's cool. Yeah, they kind of did a good ending. Uh, Alexa Bliss with a fireball. Great. You know, but can they do that consistently without relying on guys like Triple H and Goldberg? I think there needs to be a creative shift. They need to and, be a star. They need to have a star. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Forget it. You know, forget about creative shifts. And listen, I agree with you. But in reality, who's their guy? Who's the guy that the nonchalant, the casual fan is saying, oh, crap, I like this guy. It's got to be Roman at this point, right? If you're it, looking at the uh, the entirety of WWE. Ro Roman, yes, in the last, you know, three months, he's be he's becoming this. But, mm -hmm. you know, I does. Here's a question for you. Hypothetical. Sure. OK, okay. you're hey. in a bar on the at the Jersey Shore. OK, I'm, out. I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing out. this hypo hypothetical. You're hanging Please. out. There's a bunch. Of, yeah. it's, it's it's busy. It's a busy bar. Sure. OK, awesome. Live okay. bands playing. Great. And you're sitting down yeah. with your friends I'm with you. and you look over to a table uh -huh. and you see Roman Reigns sitting at that table. OK, do you think that bar in that area would recognize Roman 
and he would be flooded by nearly everybody in that venue. Do you think that would be a reality for Roman? 100%. I think so. 100%? You know why? Okay. Why? Yeah. You know why? I'll tell you why. Watching, looking at somebody who has that presence walk into a public area, people are going to say, hey, that guy looks familiar. Somebody's going to say, I think my kid watches that guy on TV. Some guy's going to be like, oh, shit, that's Roman Reigns. And then everybody's going to go on their phone and look for Start pictures look- of this guy. And then yeah. all of a sudden, they're going to be like, holy shit, this guy's famous. Let me try to walk over there and get a autograph or a picture with them. It's not going to matter why. They're not, yeah. They don't have to be wrestling fans. They're, they're just going to see this dude walk in and immediately think, this guy's got to be somebody. Look at him. Okay, so now let's replace Roman Reigns with uh, I don't know. Give me sure. a tag team guy. Give me, give me a tag team guy that's like pretty well known. Edge. You want to go with Edge? Sure, let's go with Edge. Right. Let's go with a little anything. bit. Let's say Edge. <laughs> let's say Edge uh-huh. is sitting at that bar. What do you yeah. think the recogniz- What do you think the 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 amount of people that recognized Edge and went over would be? You think it would be more than more than a Roman Reigns? I think it would be. <sighs> Not as fiery a reaction. I think there would be people who recognize him. Absolutely. Are me and you at this bar? We're at the bar. Yeah. Are me and you, like, are we approaching? Or would you, if you saw Edge at a bar sitting alone, would you go up to him and be like, I would never do that. I would never go over. Nope. Sign my titty. Wouldn't do it. (laughs) I I would just leave the guy alone so he could enjoy his drink. But I got to tell you, um, I, I don't want, I could tell you that I have experienced that with mm-hmm. a not a not a edge uh a roman, and not right? not a roman but somebody that i was shocked uh mm-hmm. not because of their ability and what they've achieved in wrestling or any of that just the fact that it's a normal guy and right. they the amount of people that go went over to this person and recognized them men and women Men and women was astounding to me. Can I tell the story? Uh, I don't know. Are you going to mention names? No, 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 no. I'll be very you, careful. You can name it. it. Yeah, just, yeah. Don't mention to, time frame gonna, names. No, no, no. I'm going to yeah, say, okay. all right. You were, you were, Andrew, like, the, the, we're, we've kind of been circling this. So Andrew was at an undisclosed location at some point in time, and he happened to be hanging out with somebody that we may or may not know who may or may not have been a wrestler. Uh, this person, Andrew, was showing me pictures that there were people really lined up to meet this guy and he was happy to meet every single one of them. Also not a guy you would think that would have a 20 person crowd of people near them. Yes. Did I do a good yeah. job with that? You did a very good job. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not giving a time frame. I don't want people to piece things together. This isn't something mm-hmm. that happened last week or the week before it's all over, you know, right. it could be whatever, but it just, it's, I always think that as far as, you know, Mm-hmm. If to kind of sum up the show, I don't know how we ended up here, but you want to talk about like everybody's very excited about WWE versus AEW. AEW's this, WWE's that, AEW sucks, WWE sucks, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, you're looking at it as a marketer, right? Because that's my background is in marketing and mm-hmm. media and stuff like that. AEW does not have that recognize, recognize, recognition factor associated mm-hmm. with its talent yet that WWE does even on a mid range level or an upper mid range level. And I think until AEW hits that point, it's not, it's not a discussion whether WWE is going to lose to AEW or, or, you know, what's going to happen because Mm -hmm. there's a lot more than ratings. Right. And listen, and I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not very happy with WWE's product right now. And I, and I, we could talk about this for, for another hour, but when you look at when you look at this and you're trying to say like, well, why is one better than the other one? When is one going to overtake the other one? When your mid range guys could go out there and go to a restaurant and they're getting mobbed, right? Uh, that's when you know that you've 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 you're onto something tremendous. Absolutely. I'll just leave it at that. Good. That, that was good. good. That was a good wrap up. Okay. You did a good job. You did All right, good guys. Job with that. Go to our website gfknetwork.com. Of course, we're also on F four W online.com uh the wrestling observer website wrestlingobserver.com you can check out our content there we got some cool stuff going on uh in a couple of weeks we'll uh you'll be you'll see some more stuff let's mm-hmm. put it that way i'll oh, see yeah. some more stuff in a couple of weeks 
Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. There you go. Look at that. And you can follow oh, Rich yeah. on Twitter at BTC Rich. And we'll see you all next time, guys. Take care. <laughs>